All right, what is the jet stream and how does it work? So let's review a couple of things about the atmosphere. Um, so generally, atmospheric pressure decreases the further up you go. Okay, it's highest at the surface and decreases with altitude. So these dashed lines that I've drawn in this diagram here are pressure levels. And I've labeled them in millibars. So we got 900 millibars down here near the surface, and it decreases 800, 700, 600, and so on, up to 200 at the top. All right, and remember also that the density of air depends on its temperature. So hot air is less dense than cold air. So if you have an air mass and that air mass gets heated up, um, it expands. So if you have a mass of air that's heated up and it expands, it expands out vertically and actually the like height of the whole atmosphere increases. And when an air mass is cooled, it shrinks down vertically. So these pressure levels, the spacing between them can change depending on whether that is a, a warm air mass or a cold air mass. As an air mass gets heated up, it's almost like you can think of an accordion unfolding and being pulled apart. The different pressure levels expanding out like this and becoming more spaced apart. And when air is cooled down, the whole atmosphere kind of shrinks down like this because cold air is more dense and the spacing between these pressure levels decreases like an accordion being pushed back together. So what happens then if you've got two air masses next to each other with different temperatures? You got one that's hot and one that's cold. Well, in the hot air mass, the pressure levels are expanded. The hot air is less dense. The whole atmosphere kind of rises out and expands like this. And in the cold one, they're closer together. So there's this sloping of the pressure lines that happens. So down near the surface, it's not very dramatic, but because the spacing is greater between the pressure levels in this hot air over here, as you go up, these pressure lines tilt more and more and more. So by the time you get to the upper levels of the troposphere, the slope of the pressure levels is pretty steep. Okay, so sloping pressure levels, what does that matter? Uh, well, remember that a difference in pressure over a distance is what causes wind, right? Air wants to flow from high pressure to low pressure. Think of like a balloon being filled with air. That's high pressure air in there and it wants to escape when you let your finger off of it out into the lower pressure air. So I've drawn three horizontal cross sections like this through the atmosphere between two points, A and B. Okay, these are parallel with the surface here, but because of the slope of the pressure lines, because of the difference in temperature of these air masses, even though they're at the same level, A and B have different pressures. And because the lines at the, near the surface don't slope very much, it's not a very big difference. Here at B, say it's maybe about 830 millibars, whereas over at A, at the same height above the ground, it's about 820 millibars. So there's a small pressure difference. And a pressure difference over a distance is going to result in wind, so there's going to be a little bit of wind. Okay, we're up in the middle of the atmosphere here, B, we're at about 650 millibars, and A, we're at about 560 over this distance. Same height above the ground, but we got a pressure difference between A and B. So air is going to want to flow from the higher to the lower pressure. And there's more pressure difference here. This is about down here is a 10 millibar difference. Up here, it's a 90 millibar difference. So the wind's going to be stronger. All right. What about way up here? Well, at this point, the sloping of the pressure lines has become pretty significant. So there's a pretty significant pressure difference from A to B. Okay, B is about 305 millibars, A is 150 millibars. So that is 155 millibar difference between A and B, much bigger than it was at lower altitude. So we're going to have much stronger winds up here because there's a much larger pressure difference over the same horizontal dif distance from B to A. Okay, so there's another thing we have to take into consideration in the atmosphere. There's something called the Coriolis force. 
Um, the Coriolis force would be a topic for a different video, but the effect of it is that it's due to the Earth's rotation, and the effect of it is that in the northern hemisphere, airflow is deflected to the right. Okay, so we've got a small pressure difference from B to A, we've got a medium pressure difference from B to A, we've got a strong pressure difference from B to A. So with just that, we would have a little bit of wind going this way, medium amount of wind going this way, and a lot of wind going this way. But because of the Coriolis force, the winds are deflected to the right, so they want to flow from B to A, and they're deflected to the right to flow into the page. So these purple circles here represent the strength of the wind, the X represents that they're going into the page, okay, away from you. So this high speed, high winds up here, particularly strong winds, um, is essentially the jet stream. Um, so it depends on there being this temperature difference between two air masses, okay? And the strength of that high altitude wind up here is going to depend on how much these pressure lines slope, right? The more the pressure lines are tilted, the greater the pressure difference between these two points. And what causes the pressure levels to be tilted like that? It's the temperature difference, because the hot atmosphere expands up and the cold one shrinks down. So the greater the temperature difference between two air masses like this, and the shorter the distance it is over, the stronger these winds up here. So you can see if we've got warm and cool, here I had hot and cold, if we've just got a less temperature difference, just warm and cool, so it's a weaker, a weaker temperature gradient going this way, the winds aren't going to be as strong, and we might not get a wind up here that's strong enough to, to count as what we would call a jet stream. And it's kind of an arbitrary amount, what, what you would exactly call a jet. Um, but if we've got cool and warm air here, right, the warm air is expanded a little bit more. The distance between the pressure levels is a little bit greater than in the cool air mass. So there is some sloping of the pressure lines. And as you go from B to A, there is a pressure difference that's going to cause wind to blow and then be deflected to the right into the page, but it's not as strong as it was with the stronger temperature difference, hot and cold. So where in the atmosphere are we gonna find most likely two air masses of significant difference in temperature that are close together? Well, typically we find that in the middle latitudes, right? If this is the earth and we've got hot air down near the equator, and cold air near the poles, somewhere in the middle is where they meet and mix. And that's the middle latitudes where most of the United States sits. Um, so that's where typically you find the strongest jet streams, the strongest high altitude winds. And typically going from west to east, it varies. Um, and jet streams we also find associated with frontal systems a lot of the time, because when you have a front, you have a cold air mass and a hot air mass. A front is just an area where the temperature changes pretty rapidly over a short distance. So with that, we've got this sloping pressure line set up because of that. And so often jet streams are associated with fronts. And you can look at the, I've got the high altitude significant weather prog chart up here, and you'll find jet streams uh, on there. So these green arrows here are going to be the jet streams. Um, and you can see, you know, it varies, but pretty generally they're going west-ish to east-ish. Um, and they've got the, the altitudes posted on them and then the strengths uh, in the flags here. Um, but yeah, that's where you can see them.